Happy Halloween, scumbags. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'm oh, James. Hey. This is Brock. And this is The High Ground, where we uh, review things on The High Ground. The High Ground. Last week, you reviewed From a Certain Point of View with yep. Andrew Fantasia. It was the worst. And because <laughs> it's with Andrew, and people don't understand. It's oh. really hard working with Andrew. He knows this. <laughs> um, and then two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was, I did uh, the Battlefront 2 beta. Cool. With Rob McDonald, and Sweet. that was uh, so. Check those out if you haven't. But this is the high ground. Thanks a lot for checking out this week, though. With Halloween, uh, what day is it today? Saturday the twenty eighth. Yes. Yeah. So actually, one year ago today uh, was our very first episode of the Rose Come Podcast on what? YouTube, episode thirteen. It was our Halloween one. Check that one out. It's on there somewhere. If you're on the Facebook page, yeah, I believe the link uh, came up. It didn't even uh, have video. It's just a. It's just us talking. Image and us, us yeah. talking. And, and it's the logo with uh, two pumpkins. Yeah, that's <laughs> or right. Or something like that, yeah. So anyway, that was that's cool. But Halloween is just a couple days away. I uh, hope happy Halloween. Be safe with everyone. Hope you have cool costumes. If you dress as anything cool, uh, put, send it to us on yeah. Facebook. That would be kind of cool uh, to see as well. I am going to go as Super Mario. <laughs> because I have a Mario hoodie. And I don't dress up. I, I am in Whistler for cool. Halloween. Cool. You are having a party tonight. And you are dressing as Chip, or sorry, Dale from <laughs> Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. My other roommate, Joe, is going to be Chip, and his girlfriend is going to be Gadget, and it's going to be fantastic. And your other roommate is not participating whatsoever. Yeah. He's, he's kind of the loner. Of he's being a real Daryl. <laughs> his name is, is Daryl. But today, oh, yeah, that's right. to celebrate Halloween, and, you know, this is one that I've heard people mock it, but I think it's a really good book, to be honest. It's Joe Schreiber's Death Troopers. Death Troopers. We're going to talk about it because this is a Star Wars horror book. If you watched Ooh. episode 65, we talk about the possibility of a horror film. Yeah. But this is a horror book in Legends. It is Legends, so, it, you know, whatever happens, it does not matter in canon. Yep. Because of whatever. <laughs> Which is good because a lot of weird stuff happens in this, and you're like, oh. <laughs> but the, the other point that I want to make is it doesn't lessen the book in any way whatsoever because you can still enjoy it for what it is which is one thing that i kind of miss about star wars i mean look some of the legend stuff is like like even this i'll consider it's off the rocker like you're like yeah oh yeah like hey you want to do something crazy but they had fun with it It, it's it's worth reading because it's very unique i would argue in anything star wars because you don't really see a ton of this and if you're a fan of taking a story or characters and throwing them in a new genre like, say, if you liked um, anything like the Archie comics are doing, like uh, Archie Afterlife, Sabrina, or even just Archie meets Kiss or Archie meets <laughs> Archie versus Sharknado. Something just like, let's just take these characters and throw them in the weirdest situation. This book is for you. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, it doesn't really affect normal canon, so you could put in stuff... You could you could put this in. Uh, Han and Chewie are in it. They're yeah. only our only real core Star yeah. Wars characters in it. Otherwise, they're just you know stormtroopers, Imperial officers, technicians working on a yeah, cause star it's, destroyer. If, if I remember correctly, they're on the the star destroyer they're on is like a prison though. Sorry, yes, yeah, it's not it's star. It's, it's well, not star. It's, it's like a, a fri- floating yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a floating, floating prison. prison. So it's prisoners and Imperials. And then inevitably Han and Leia, Han and Han Chewie. Chewie, and it takes place before A New Hope, before you get to know them. Yes, in Star Wars, so they're they're open to that. But it was kind of cool because it, you know when you read it, and looking back now, and you think of The Walking Dead. Yeah, you're like this could have been. Yeah, really cool. It's like the prison series season of The Rocky yeah, Walking and Dead. S- yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like season two, three, or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh. You can tell it was written by a fan because they uh, there is mention of Life Day. So, like, if this book was canon, then it would make the Christmas special canon, which already is technically canon, uh, as it's always been said that if well, George Lucas had nothing to do with this, but yet yet he did the on the the Christmas the Christmas special. Uh, as we spoke last week. Uh, from a certain point of view, there is mention of the B. Arthur character, so therefore some of the characters are real. And Chewie's a real character, so but there is mention of Life Day in it. I yeah. believe Chewie's wife, because you can sort of hear inside Chewie's head. So like, there's that fun little tidbit in there. It's not a huge part. It's just like Chewie's uh, 
been infected slightly with this virus that is making people making uh, 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 reanimating people that are dead. So he gets cured of it. I, I can't really remember how he, he but he, but you get to hear inside his head. So two things you get to hear about the life day. So it's like a little tip of the hat from uh, the writer that's like, hey, Christmas special, you know, you've seen it, you've seen that thing. And then also, we never hear, like, we don't understand what Chewie's saying. We can understand what he implies, but we never hear him speaking. So to be able to hear inside of his head was a lot of fun. I believe it's a full chapter like that. Uh, so yeah, that's why I mean when the writer's like, yeah, you, well, I know what you want. Here we go. <laughs> and, and just the fact that, like, he was allowed to do this is like, okay, let's go crazy. So Well, speaking of going crazy, you... This also really kind of shows the life dead and how, what Han means to Chewie in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there is that one part where they open up a door and there are Wookiees eating humans. That's Can, right, because yeah. there are some Wookiees. You know, yeah, prisoners. and there's a baby Wookiee. Yeah. And they go to rescue <laughs> the baby Wookiee, and the baby Wookiee jumps on Han and starts attacking Han, yeah. and Chewie blasts the baby Wookiee's head yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of an adult read. Yeah, this oh, is, yeah big when time. we were doing our episode fifty five earlier this week, and we talked about you don't need gore, and whatnot. This one has it all, but I think you can get away with it more in a book. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a huge departure from the normal Star Wars feel. Like it's, it's let's take the Star Wars universe and just throw it in a new genre. It's, uh, it's not. Oh, look out! Those stormtroopers are zombies. It's more like people die off real quickly. Yeah. They kill off main characters, and there's no there's no retribution. It's truly a horror book. So, uh, but yeah, like you said, like it's it's kind of brutal at parts, but uh, it's it's a fun read for sure. It is brutal, but it and obviously it's legends, and I know mm. so, and mm. some people I have heard bad like zombie stormtroopers. That's dumb. It is kind of dumb, but. Yeah. But. At the same time, it's a fun book, and especially this time of the year, Halloween, when you just kind of want something fun and scary, you're like, yeah, yeah. pick that up, and yeah. you can make it a read, kind of like, you know, I read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow every year, I watch, a, I read A Christmas Carol every Christmas, yeah. this is one that I can pick up in October, have a good time with, follow, you know, my favorite Star Wars characters around, and enjoy some Life Day conversations mm-hmm. and some uh, blood and guts from it's, you know, it's, it's a divided camp on how people feel about the Christmas special, but it, I would argue that if you're going to... No, if you're gonna recognize that uh, Chris TV special, you might as well recognize this book as well because it's sort of like why would why would we ever go to <laughs> want go to Keshik and have like a mock Christmas sort of thing, like the, all the things they did with it in that it's it's really terrible yet it's also fun you know because it's so out of left field. So why wouldn't you like it? Just the fact that it's like oh wouldn't you. Deep down, every every Star Wars fan wants to learn more about the characters. So with the Christmas special, it's like, oh, Chewie has a family. Well, that's awesome. I want to know what it's. It was. It went about really wrong, but so you can't. If but a lot of people like that because it's so goofy and corny and campy. If you're gonna notice that one, you gotta check check out this book. It's, I, and it's I, easy to read. I'm not even gonna argue this. I'm gonna flat out say this book is better than the holiday. Oh special. sure. Like this sure. is, the thing with this book is, yeah, okay, there's zombie stormtroopers and Han and Chewie mm-hmm. and blah, 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 but it's actually a good book. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, when you finish reading it, you feel satisfied. And I would yeah. argue you feel more satisfied than you do with some of the new canon stuff that you have. Mm-hmm. Not to put it down or anything, but no. the, I mean, look, it's more satisfying than some of the, the Legends book as well, because some of those things are terrible also. But this yeah. one, to me, is like, yeah, it's ridiculous, but you, it's still fun. And mm-hmm. it knows... It knows the Star Wars world enough, and it knows the world that it's living in enough, and it's able to yeah. have respect for both sides that when they come together, you totally buy in to zombie stormtroopers. Yeah. It's sort of like, it's an interesting read, because it's like, what would happen if like a virus spread throughout a star cruiser, or star destroyer, or like a prison, whatever it is? Because uh, that, it doesn't have to be they turn into zombies, but like, there's there's often like facts on like people who get assigned to these massive imperial ships sometimes never leave for years because mm-hmm. it's like its own it's so big that it's almost like a planet or this there you know they say like people on the Death Star never saw half of the Death Star because it's just so massive so it's uh it would be interesting because it, it like a virus like that could spread and so it's like oh what would happen so it, it's neat it's you kind of don't see that, I feel, a lot, where it's like, what is life inside one of these massive machines? 
You brought up a good point too, where nobody gets sick in Star Wars, so we don't know what viruses are. <laughs> exactly. So this could just be a common vi- yeah, virus. Yeah, yeah in exactly. Star Wars. So. But it's an interesting avenue to explore. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm kind of and like we said it last week on the episode on the podcast where it's like there are horror fans, mm-hmm. and they you know maybe these horror fans like Star Wars, but maybe they would like to see that worlds co- collide. Exactly. I'm sure there's a few watching right now that are like I would really. That may not even know about this book existing because it was, I don't know if it was under the radar. I remember when it came out, it was everywhere plastered in our bookstores here. I don't know how it was everywhere else. And I just, I love the graphic of the Stormtrooper helmet with the hook through its eye. Yeah. It was an empty helmet. So it wasn't a, it was kind of like a meat blood hook. On it. Yeah, like a meat hook. And it's like, you know, and the, the helmet's been beat up and it's bloody. Yeah. And it said Death Troopers. And I was, I was so enamored by that that yeah. I had to buy, I forgot yeah. it today, but I had to buy. I had to buy it because exactly. I really had to. And then I haven't read it yet. We'll do it next year. <laughs> but Red Harvest is the – he did a prequel. Yeah. He wrote a prequel to this, which – so obviously there is a fan base for this book. People love this yeah. Death Troopers book. I mean, the name Death Trooper is now in canon. It is not Zombie Stormtroopers. No. It is uh, – let's actually cite Akbar to that for a bit because you have a cool theory about Death Troopers yourself. Oh, yes. I – believe that they're like uh angels of death because they only seem to appear when someone's about to die which i know is a really hard premise to like to swallow because people get shot in star wars constantly but you know like when especially in rogue one they uh they're there but always someone someone important dies usually when they're relevant because they're not as i don't know if this makes sense when they're shown showing the new star so stormtroopers, there was death troopers, there was tank, there was beach, whatever scarif, scarif. and uh, uh, when you actually see the movie, the other troopers are what you see more of it. The death troopers, which makes sense because they're an elite squad, they're always kind of with Krennic. Uh, but then you know when we see them in the first scene, Lear dies. Uh, we see them when both Baz and um, Chirrut are are dead are killed are dead <laughs> when they are dead, <laughs> and you know it, I think what really hit me was like you can't hear what they're saying so it's like they're speaking in another language and I believe the, the explanation is that they're just on a separate channel that they can't hear that or that so like you can't just you cannot understand what they're saying but and then I believe uh, occasionally you see them in. Uh, and Rebels as well, and there's always someone. They're on this last week's episode of Rebels, which you have not seen no, 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 yet. Not they speak English in this episode, right? Right. But I think that was more for the cartoon. But somebody does die. Oh, so there you go. Not somebody massive, but somebody does die, and so I thought of that immediately. I was like, oh, because at one point I was like, oh, I guess Brock's theory is wrong, and then someone died, and I was like, oh, I really, I really, got Andrew. I talked to Andrew on this week's I Rebel about. It. He loves that yeah. idea too. That. They are the angels. I don't know if, if Lucasfilm knows that, if that's in their mind or no. not. But I really like that idea. I mean, and, and so far, yeah. it's, it's panning out that way. You no, know it is, because it just feels like they, no one really speaks to them, too. I believe Krennic kind of does, but like they're kind of... They're just... I guess in the same sense that they're similar to the Imperial Guard. Yeah. They're just there. And maybe that's just because, well, we, he's got to have special guards for the Emperor or whatever. They're just in the background. That's what it feels about they're, they're, like they're, no one really speaks to them, but they're kind of present, and it's like, well, why are they called death troopers? Because it's they don't seem that, in my opinion, they don't seem that skilled over a normal stormtrooper. They probably can just they just kill more on screen than we've seen a stormtrooper. Like the joke is right, stormtroopers they yeah. miss more than they they hit. There is a meme right now. I don't know if you've seen mm. it. And it's a stormtrooper handing out candy to a trick or treater, and he misses the bag <laughs> completely, and the candy falls on the floor. So it's yeah, that, that that would be kind of cool if uh, they they were in fact. I think if at best it was just like when they put them in and the way they shoot them, they're like they're kind of like the angel of death. Someone always dies when they appear, but it's not really important. It's not really the fact. But that's my theory. That, that was like, oh, that'd be cool. These are the things I think of. It's a good thought though. Yeah. It is. I wanted to do a. St- uh, we'll talk about that in a future mm. podcast. I think. Let's go back to this book. Would you recommend this book? To- oh, hands down. Would, have you? Would you? Are you going to read Red Harvest, knowing now that there's a prequel to this? Uh, yeah. Like I, I thought. I think I heard about it, and I thought it was after because the Death Troopers ends on like a cliffhanger, like oh yeah. something else could happen. So I thought that was Red Harvest, but I guess this comes before. Uh, if I got a copy, I would definitely read it. Uh, it's funny. I, I rarely. 
I don't want to say rarely. When there's a new Star Wars book comes out and I want it, I go right away. So it's usually on the front, but I don't really peruse the Star Wars section, I find. One, because it's such... The, the times I have, it's so stocked strangely from store to store. Uh, and it's just easier. If you know what you want, you just to order it off Amazon, right? Um, but yeah, if I got a copy of it, I would definitely read it. Because the first one was like 300 pages. Yeah. It's an easy, easy read, so... Really? Did I let you borrow it last year? Yeah, I borrowed that, your yeah. copy. Yeah, it's a super easy read. That's why I say it. Like, if you if you like this time of the year and you like Star Wars, it's yeah. a perfect read. Like, I'm gonna read this a few days before Halloween exactly. just to get into the you know, you know, you're obsessed with Star Wars because the movie's coming out. Mm. It just kind of continues that mood yeah. for it and goes for it. And that's why I think a Star Wars horror film would work down the road. Yeah, for eventually. sure. Not in this vein necessarily. No, like I said, this is I would keep contain keep this contained in comics and books. The film should stay yeah. more neutral to all that, but. We talk about it more in uh, in episode sixty five of Rebel Scum podcast, but like I think it's it's got to be cerebral if there's a horror film, and it's got to be it's got to be more of a thriller. But it yeah. could still be considered a horror. Like you know, Get Out can kind of fall into horror, I, but I not really. That, well, it's 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 under the horror, yeah, like genre. But I would, I think it's more of a thriller than a yeah. horror. Yeah, I, so. mean, I mean, it might be horror, but mm. I don't. I mean. There's a fine line, I guess, between horror and thriller yeah. sometimes. Yeah. There's a fine line between sci-fi and fantasy as Star Wars. <laughs> you know what? You could just very easily just make Alien, but put Star Wars characters on it. You just have a... That's true. <laughs> There's a... one of the things from Force Awakens uh, uh, in the in Han, the Han's bringing the, the, that they almost Rathar? killed. Rathars. <laughs> That's all you do. You just put a Rathar on a, like a smart Rathar. On a ship, and they can't escape the end. That's kind of what this book is. Yeah, pretty much. But it's zombies. What yeah. do you guys think? Do you guys want zombie stormtroopers? Would you? What if they were like, hey, we're making a Star Wars horror film, and it's about zombie stormtroopers. Would you be down with that? Or you'd be like, uh, you're jumping the shark. If they made a show about it? Uh, no, or a movie. A movie? Yeah. But here's how you flip it. Make it clones that have got, been like gone oh. bad or something, or... Someone found a batch of clones and did stuff. Or, you know what I mean? It's Make it almost like a, a short circuit where lightning hits a factory with clones and they all go haywire and they can't be stopped. And they are like, Clone 5 is alive. I just watched Short Circuit. Like oh, a week fantastic ago. film. It's so good. The second one was shot in the Eden Center. I was going to say, it's shot in Toronto. Of course, it was Fisher Stevens, everyone's favorite Indian. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> imagine wow. doing that today. Oh. Holy crap. You would be shamed and oh out of it. He was in, happening uh, constantly. What show was he in recently? Is it Big Little Eye? No, The Night Of. He played the pharmacist in The Night Of. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Fisher Stevens. And Aaron was like, who's that? I'm like, uh, have you not seen the Super Mario Brothers movie? <laughs> and more importantly, he's a producer, I guess, of... Bright Lights, the documentary about Leia, uh, Leia. <laughs> Carrie Fisher, and Debbie really? Reynolds. I believe so. He's involved somehow. Wow. He's, at the end, he's interviewing them. You never. I think you see him briefly, but he's not. He's not forefront, but you hear his voice a couple times. Wow. Yeah. Fisher Stevens. Yeah. Shout out. He was great. He's doing though. a lot of doc stuff too, That's right? Cool. So I yeah. like Fisher Stevens. I mean, the role in Short Circuit is kind of weird. <laughs> it's just. But you let that. it go. As a kid, you're like. Okay. I don't even, well, I don't even, well, you don't register. You, don't, yeah, but you love his character. Like, yeah, oh yeah, his character's great. It's his just the fact that the they, like, they didn't have to make him Indian, but... But they I, did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was the 80s. Yeah, they were trying... And when I talked about this with somebody the other day, I was like, the 80s was a weird time for movies. Like, they were trying... They tried so... They, what were we talking about this last week? They didn't figure out... They hadn't figured out movies until, like, 1997. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and then they're like, oh, we got it. And they're like, push on, push on. Anyway, Death Troopers, Death uh, Troopers. highly recommended. We got to check out Red Harvest mm-hmm. and get on that one. If there's anything you guys want us to review on High Ground, we try to keep them short, like 20, 30 minute episodes, because you guys have a lives and it's Saturday night. And we're going to go party. It's Halloween. Or you could just watch the Sunday morning when you're hungover from candy. <laughs> what? No, Halloween's on Tuesday. Oh. So we hung over from Well, yeah, from the Halloween parties party. you went on because adults go to the parties on Saturday. There no. you go. Sorry. Real adults have it on actual Halloween. Yeah, but there'll be candy. <laughs> what kind of candy are you having at your party tonight? Apparently, there will be 
gummy bears that are soaked in booze and stuff. Yeah, the vodka gummy bears. And Marissa will be here, so they'll be they'll be cupcakes for sure. All right. Anyway, that has been this episode of High Ground. Highly recommend checking out Death Troopers if you are into horror. If you don't like horror, stay away from Death Troopers. You see Han, Chewie, Zombie Stormtroopers. Yep. Uh, there's a trio of new characters in this as well. Yeah. Uh, what do you and, mean? Well, there's new characters like that aren't in Star Wars. Yeah. That were made just. Well, there's more than three. Yeah. Well, there's two yeah. main ones, right? Right. There's the two brothers, like the, the nurse. Yeah. And there's that one droid and stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, there are new characters in it, who, yeah. and they do, and because they're not going to kill Han and Chewie. No. Spoiler alert! Spoiler. But other people do. People do suffer though, and they, mm. they suffer gruesome deaths. I highly recommend reading Dead Troopers. I actually mm. like it's one of my favorite of the Legends novels. I know that is not the most popular opinion, <laughs> but it is. It's just it's a fu- because it's a fun read. It's like fluff. It's like when you turn on a show and you're like, "This is fluff," and you you're, you're just let like your brain rot. Yeah. And that's what I like about that. That's a weird review. <laughs> I like my brain rotting. Ooh. No, but it's 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 it, it doesn't worry about anything. It's just like this is something I want to do, and they do it. Yeah, and that's why like there's not like it's not like you know I say this with the new books they're not handcuffed to anything. No, he's like I want to tell a zombie story, and then whoever was in charge of who I can't remember who published it was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's Star Wars just. Throw the name on it and it'll yeah. sell. And it did. And you got me to buy it because of the graph. Yeah. I, I judged the book by its cover and this time it panned out for him. Yeah, I, I believe the preface in there. The author's like, so they let me do this. This is crazy. <laughs> and then he got to make another one. Yeah. That's even crazier. Yeah. All right, Brock, where can everybody find you at? At BS Mink on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me at Petsafina on Instagram, Twitter, and PlayStation 4 where you can kick my rear end. At Battlefront, mm. and soon in a couple weeks, Battlefront dose. The Battlefronting. All right, guys, that's all for this episode of High Ground. May the force of others be with you. Death Troopers. Happy Halloween. <laughs> hey, scumbags! Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.